This is a map of all of Moscow's public transportation systems. If you've never seen it before, it may look like something a three-year-old would draw, but it's actually extremely complex and efficient, containing the busiest metro system in the world outside of Asia, with over two billion annual riders every year. That's more than New York City's and Toronto's combined to put that into perspective. Each color identifies a different line of transport, and obviously there's tons of them. But first we're going to focus on these three circles. The Bolshaya Koltsevaya line in teal, the Moscow Central Circle in red, and the Koltsevaya line in brown. These three transit lines are all orbital lines, meaning they obviously go in circles. And this is extremely important for the geniusness of Moscow. See, orbital lines play a major role in major metro systems, allowing for more direct travel between different parts of the city. Without them, a purely radial system forces passengers to move inwards to the city center to change lines and then head back outwards, making journeys longer, less efficient, and also overburdening central stations. Now, I'm not saying Moscow's the only city doing this or anything. I mean, London's Circle Line, Berlin's Ringbahn, Tokyo's Yamanote Line, and Shanghai's Line 4 all do the same things as well. But none of these cities have the unique multi-layered system that Moscow has. The Koltsevaya line links to 12 stations that form a circle around Moscow's city center. The Moscow Central Circle, or MCC for short, links to 31 stations that serves Greater Moscow and connects the suburbs with the city, while the Bolshaya Koltsevaya line also links 31 stations and is the outer circle, easing transit lines between the outskirts of Moscow. So when you're trying to transfer between two extremely busy lines, such as the zamosk Vorotskaya line and the sokil line, for example, you can simply use the orbital lines to do this. But that's just one part of this. Moscow's orbital lines have been meticulously planned to intersect with multiple radial lines, ensuring ease of transfer and connectivity. No other city in the world has it integrated or balanced as Moscow does. But enough with these orbital lines, because the truth is, Moscow has much, much more than just this. I mean, as of 2023, with all forms of public transportation combined, Moscow has 440 stations and a line length of 503 miles. But like I said, that's all forms of public transportation. And to truly appreciate Moscow's transportation infrastructure, we need to break everything up. So far, everything we've mentioned makes up just some of Moscow's metro, which evidently is the bulk of Moscow's infrastructure, containing 263 of the stations and 279 miles of tracks between its 15 lines. It serves not only Moscow, but also the neighboring cities of Krasnogorsk, Ryotov, Liuberci, and Kotelniki. As for the price of tickets, through buying with the Troika card, it's only 218 rubles, or $2.2 for a single day ticket, which allows you to change trains as many times as you like, with no limits on distance or time. For an entire month of this, it's literally just $20. And you don't even really need to use the card anymore, because in October of 2021, the Moscow Metro became the first metro system in the world to offer base pay to their customers, meaning passengers can now pay for their ride without taking out their phone, metro or bank card, which therefore increases passenger flow at the station entrances. But here's the thing about Moscow's Metro that really stands out. It's efficient. Like, really efficient. The Moscow Metro is the world leader in frequency of train traffic. Intervals during peak hours don't exceed 80 seconds. They're the first and only country on Earth to switch to the schedule. Just to understand how insane this is, NYC subway lines during peak hours have intervals of two to five minutes. The Moscow Metro also stands out in other ways too, like its beauty. While it may be the busiest metro system in Europe, it's also a tourist attraction in and of itself because of how beautifully the stations were built. See, the Moscow Metro was one of the USSR's most extravagant architectural projects, with stations constructed as luxurious palaces for the people. That's how they ended up with each station being a unique work of art symbolic of Russia's pride and history. I mean, just look at both the Komsomolskaya and Mayakovskaya stations to see what I'm talking about. Stunning. The big flaw in this metro, though, is the fact they only run from 5.30 a.m. to 1 a.m leaving a four and a half hour gap of nothingness, where the only way to get around Moscow at these hours is with taxis, nine bus routes, and one tram route. To be fair, this is for maintenance, but when you compare it to say, New York City subway that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you have to deduct a few points for this. 
But anyways, the Moscow Metro is just one piece of the system. If you look back at a map of Moscow's total transportation systems, I want you to now look at these lines here. Now obviously, this map includes future plans till the end of 2026, so not everything on here is complete. But of these five lines, these four are complete, with this last one to be complete by 2026. Regardless though, they make up the Moscow Central Diameters, or MCD for short. They stretch all across Moscow, essentially bridging the gap in between the metro and longer distance regional trains with 188 miles of lines. It's the rapid transit solution for suburban commuters, offering a direct route for these passengers without requiring them to navigate through the central metro hubs. And I mean, they're extremely important. After the first nine months of opening up, their passenger traffic was already over 100 million individual journeys. Next, we have the buses. As metro stations outside the city center are far apart in comparison to other cities, a bus network radiates from each station to the residential zones. So every major street in the city is served by at least one bus route, with an annual bus ridership of 800 million to 1 billion every year. That's more than New York City's and Los Angeles's combined. Moscow's also been switching to electric buses. In fact, they have the second largest fleet of them in Europe behind London at 1,050 buses. By 2030, all the buses in Moscow are planned to be fully switched over to electric too. Then there's the Moscow trams. This is a map of them. Though their importance is somewhat diminished with the rise of the metro, meaning many vital connections in the network have been withdrawn, they remain a crucial part of Moscow's transportation system. Trams are still used quite a bit, don't get me wrong. They make up 5% of all Moscow's public transportation trips, with over 600,000 people using them every single day. It's just not what it was, but they still provide important crosslinks between metro lines. In total, 70% of all trips made in Moscow are via public transportation, which is pretty good. Higher than NYC slightly at 65% for comparison. Now, despite all of this, Moscow still has quite a few problems, most notably the traffic congestion. Despite having an incredible metro and overall transportation infrastructure, Moscow is still plagued with cars and those 10-lane highways such as the M11 that look straight out of an American megacity. Looking at studies online, it's consistently ranked the worst not only in Europe, but sometimes in the entire world for traffic congestion. Keep in mind though, Moscow is the second biggest city in Europe, with 13.1 million people, only behind Istanbul. And the gap isn't even that close compared to the third largest, London at 9.6 million. So it is somewhat inevitable. Though Moscow is working on this. Currently, in terms of car ownership, there's an average of around 300 cars per 1,000 people which honestly puts it at around the same level as London, but they are trying to lower it too, thanks to car sharing. Basically, car sharing is a model of car rental where people rent cars for short periods of time, often by the hour, and it's actually an amazing thing. See, not everyone wants a car, especially in big cities, but sometimes they're needed, not every day, but usually at least once or twice a week for convenience, and that's what car sharing solves. Moscow has the biggest fleet in the world for this, with over 30,000 cars providing more than 150,000 trips every day. It's insanely cheap too, ranging from just 3 to 20 US cents per minute. So Moscow's residents aren't necessarily encouraged to get cars. If they need one, they can rent one. But it keeps car ownership lower than it could be, which is ultimately amazing for the environment and congestion. Overall, Moscow's been working really hard to improve their public transportation. Since 2011, 187 miles of metro lines have been added to the city, along with a combined 150 metro, MCD and MCC stations, providing 3.8 million more residents with available transportation near their homes. That's like the population of Berlin for reference. And Moscow isn't stopping here, because they're improving even more. By 2033, there's planned to be just 39 more stations opened, with their total number eventually exceeding 400 joining NYC and Shanghai as the only cities on Earth past that amount. So, all in all, Moscow is pretty well designed and connected in an efficient way. And while it can look chaotic sometimes from an outside perspective, like when you watch videos of their highways and traffic jams, it definitely is better than it seems. Thank you for watching.